You're listening to Catalyst for Change, and my name is Jessica Huckabee, your host. I started this podcast to learn what makes people resilient after challenging events and how they have used those series of events as a catalyst for change in their life. So you'll hear some stories of resiliency and strength. So get ready, sit back, and be prepared to be inspired. So this week, I'm talking to Nicole Burgess, and she's the podcast host of Soul Filled Sisterhood. She is a life coach and a psychologist, and um, she has over 15 years as a licensed marriage and family therapist. She shares today some tools that have helped people that she's worked with, and um, a lot of the work that she does is with women who define themselves as being more introverted by nature. So, But her skills and her uh, tools that she shares with us are good for any population. So let's get started. Nicole, can you tell me about how you arrived at where you're at now of being a coach for for women and also a licensed marriage and family therapist? I absolutely can. First, let me say thank you so much for having me on. Like many people, you know, the story is full of twists and turns. And I started out as an accountant many years ago. And then I went into being a business analyst and I traveled different parts of the world and installing software and doing trainings. And no matter where I went, even from a much younger age, people would come in and sit in my cube and they would tell me their life story. I could be out at the library and somebody would tell me about a relationship issue. No matter where I went, people just wanted to share what was going on in their life. And I was like, okay. And I remember in high school having a psychology class and I absolutely loved it. And so when I went into college, I minored in psychology because I loved how the brain worked. I love human behaviors. And it was finally not until my early 30s that I finally went back to grad school and actually got training so that I could actually know how to work with people in that capacity. And then I went on to get licensed in California and now here in Indiana. And I've been working with so many people and families. I've come from a very systems perspective and we work with trauma stuff. I work through trauma and anxiety issues and just family issues in general. And now where I'm at in my life and my my career is I wanted a bigger bigger kind of playground to be in versus just the state that I'm in. We're restricted to that. And I understand why our rules and regulations are there. But to be able to help women that are not looking for necessarily specific mental health issue, but either life or career things that are coming up and helping them in that capacity. And that's kind of where I am now. It's like, oh, it's a much bigger playground now, which is fun. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. So it developed from people wanting to just share their story because you seem like a really friendly person. Mm -hmm. So they felt safe and comfortable and you worked, you actually bridged that into a career. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And when I went to grad school, it really was, I, you know, I've told people before, it's like for me, the school I went to, it was like coming home to me. It was truly like, oh, this is why I'm here on this planet. And this is part of what I've been called to do. So, yeah. So you get a lot of pleasure out of, of helping people grow yep. and, and thrive in their, their life. Yeah. Wonderful. I, I love when they have those aha moments. It's like, how is it not? You know, you just, I get caught up in that. I'm like, look yeah. at you, you're doing it. I love it. The good <laughs> energy behind it and the, you know, what they're experiencing. Yep. So you must have developed a lot of tools through your training and things that you share with women that are, is it mostly women that you're working with on your Yes, in my coaching, it is. It's all adult women. And even in like my clinical practice, I work with teen girls and women as well. But to answer your question, I have for my own counseling, my own coaching experiences that I've been in, I've learned a lot of tools through school and through trainings of tons of tools I have learned over the years. Okay, wonderful. So tell us a little bit more about those tools. So I know for me, part of it is when we become aware of like our thoughts that are consistently going through our mind and when fear and self-doubt start to come up first you need to recognize it and not get attached to all those lovely little thoughts that like to come through so that would be like step number one in bringing awareness there and so I do a lot of combine combining kind of mindfulness along with you know ways to build in self-compassion as well. Some people, I call it like a spiritual practice. It doesn't mean a religious practice, but more of a spiritual practice for you. Mm -hmm. So self-compassion is huge. 
So if you're like, ooh, I just said that to the person and oh my gosh, I feel really guilty. It's like, okay, then go make amends with that person if you need to and give yourself a break. Forgive yourself for having that, right? You may need to actually work on forgiving others who have really done some trespassing or hurting you in the past. And maybe it's not safe for you to actually have dialogue with them, but it's time for you to move forward and cut that energetic cord that you have in that past so you can thrive where you are. Definitely making sure you're staying in the moment. I mean, we are in a state of the world right now where, you know, we don't know what the future is going to bring, which we never, ever had that. That's an illusion. We've got control over the future. Yeah. And every time you come back to that moment, there's more peace because the moment is the only thing you have. So those are some of the tools, of course, along with like journaling, exercise, eating healthy. I mean, those are like, we know those big kind of tools, but it's these subtle things that we do. It's like, Keep coming back to that moment, paying attention to your breathing. Are you breathing from your chest or are you breathing through your belly? Makes a big difference for how the brain responds to things. Oh, wonderful. Now, um, earlier you mentioned working with women and families that maybe are going through trauma. Can you tell me some of the things that you've learned along the way and how, how you help people become more resilient after that traumatic event? So what I've heard from from women who have been in abusive relationships, who have had trauma in childhood, there some of that is the worry, am I going to pass that along to my children? And so one, it's really working on forgiving themselves that they weren't at fault for mm-hmm. that past abuse and learning to like themselves again, really even love themselves again. And that when they ask for help, there's the bravery, there's the courageousness right there. And when they're open to reflecting where their kids are at, both thought-wise and feeling-wise, there's them breaking the cycle of abuse and trauma. Because the secrecy, like we know violence feeds violence. Mm -hmm. We know that. And if there's been secrecy in family um, systems, family of origins, where they haven't talked about past abuse, that can often get, it reappears through the family line. Because yeah. nothing is talked about, that secrecy that's not a healthy secrecy. And so when women get out of situations or maybe they're even in a situation and they're not sure how to get out, it's like you're at least taking these steps, you're recognizing it. And so recognize that strength that you have. And some of it is like, there's like, but I, but I should have, quote, right, known about this long time ago and it took forever. I'm like, that was called self-preservation. And the fact that you and I are talking now is you made it. So really, truly acknowledge that you did exactly what you needed to do in those moments to stay alive and to stay well. And this is where you're at now. So to me, that's resilience right there because you did whatever you needed to in those moments to stay alive. Yeah, just having that strength to persevere through that is great. Now, you mentioned the secrecy. Now, do you have suggestions on how to break that cycle of, of trauma and secrecy in families? Should should they be how should they be talked about and brought to light? So, one, if you've got little kids, it's not necessarily bringing all the details in for little ones, but as children get older and if you are in a safe place to be able to do this, again, the family that you're currently in, it's it's is talking about like, yeah, when I grew up, there was, you know, neglect. We didn't have the food or we didn't have the shelter that we needed. And if your parents aren't open to talking about it, you don't need to talk about it with them. But talk about it with your family and friends that you're with now. And it's just recognized they did what they did back then. And I'm moving forward and I'm telling my children if we're struggling with certain things, you know, we're the adults, we're the ones managing it. But sometimes we've got to cut back on certain things. And it's like I'm not going to pass along what happened in the past to my family now, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, But just letting them know that these things happened, maybe not all the details. Yeah, that's that's good advice. And then when they get older, maybe when they're able to understand if they have questions, filling them in. Yep. And I think the biggest piece of it is not being afraid to go to the the difficult questions that can be asked from your kids or from others. You have the choice to answer it or not answer it, but it's not that you're a bad person if you experience these things. They happen to you, you it they occurred. And it's like that's also not my defining story. Right. It's like you survived. You're thriving now. You're moving forward. It's like that's huge. And part of that breaking through is talking about things within your family. That right there starts to break the cycle. 
of, you know, secrecy. Now, mm-hmm. there are certain things it's like not everybody's going to tell you everything. And I'm not talking about like the abuse stuff, but it's like everybody has the right to some secrets in their life. You don't yeah. need to disclose everything. But it's just looking at there's nothing to be ashamed of about what happened. It happened. And here's yeah. how we're moving forward. Yeah, that's that's good advice. So that's a good tool. Now, do you do you use other things like I've known a lot of people that have went through difficult times and trauma and they're, you know, they may be stuck in that, those memories for many years. Mm-hmm. Is there a way to unstick from those, from that situation? So some of that, there's so many different kind of models out there and how I was really trained. And I think of when we're up in our head, we literally, I will say, and I know your listeners can't see this because you and I are talking on video, but they're going to hear audio or see the, or hear the audio. It's like, when you're, the memories are taking over, it's like the only part that's there is your head and they're disconnected literally from their body. So what I will do is really help people get back into their body. And it's like, if you can imagine those thoughts that are going through, those memories that are going through are like on a movie screen or on a TV screen, you can separate a little bit from that. It's like those things occurred, but you're in a safe place now. You are well now. And so they can start to recognize like, oh, just because I have these thoughts, it's because these memories are coming up right now. Does that mean I'm no longer safe or doesn't even sometimes if that's not memories, just thoughts of like, it's going to happen again. It's like, just because I have a thought doesn't mean it's true. So it's like, where in my body do I feel this fear? Where in my body do I feel the sadness? And when you can connect those places in your body, now you're out of your head and just giving yourself permission to go into where you are, which may move the memory and things through you versus trying to ignore that. And I get for some people, they it's it's not truly, quote, emotionally safe in a way for them to do it by themselves. That's where a therapist can really help support them through that process. So they really get there's a safe container they can be in to work through those past things, those past traumas. Oh, that's good. So so now you mentioned feeling it in your body and bringing it back to your body. Now, what do they do when they, you know, all of a sudden their shoulder hurts a lot and they don't really know what to do with that? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm smiling because I'm like, oh, I love this part. So with yeah. my clients, you know, I'm like, oh, awesome. So let's like breathe into that shoulder. Let's say it's your right shoulder and it's really tight and all of a sudden it's achy and it just kind of wants to like move up closer to your ear. And it's like, now let's just take a deep breath into that space in your body and let's just sit there for a moment. Now, if it had a voice, what would it say, if anything? Is there a color that comes up? Is there a shape that comes up? It's giving yourself permission to allow that part of your body to actually, in a way, have a voice. And when we do that, people are like, oh, this is just weird, Nicole. And I'm like, it's really not. It's been a technique used for many, many years, yet it is different. And yeah. so you may be uncomfortable, but it's really allowing yourself. And I give myself permission to feel uncomfortable and to go there. So for some people, they may have a really strong memory that comes up like, oh, that's where I got hit. That's where, you know, that car accident when I was in it, um, my shoulder hit the steering wheel. And so now I've got this pain that is there really scared me or whatever. And so it's like, ah, so in that moment you were really scared. And have you ever told anybody you were really scared? No, because, you know, I'm the adult and it wasn't okay for me to say that I was scared or whatever that illusion might have been, right? And so now you're giving yourself a voice just to be where you were and that part of your body to truly release it Mm -hmm. and know that it's not some big, bad, scary thing that's going to eat you alive because it's not. Okay. Well, that's really, that's really interesting how you can work with your body to get through those emotions. And maybe you mentioned breathing into it, finding, giving it a voice, giving it a color, even just visualization is a very powerful tool. It sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not making whatever comes up right or wrong. It just Mm -hmm. is what it is. So sometimes people, they will struggle with, I can't go there right now. I'm like, that's fine. I don't want you to go because I, I will literally watch them pop back up into their mind and they start to overthink like they need to give a specific answer. I'm like there is no right or wrong answer. It is whatever that part of your body. And if it wants to speak, it will speak. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But yeah. it's like if you're getting back up in your head now, let's just breathe back into your body and that's OK. Yeah. Just being with your body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. Very yeah. good. Yeah. And another tool I've heard of is en- enogram- enograms? enograms. I don't know much about the those. Can you, mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about that? 
The Enneagram, I am not well versed in. So the Enneagram, I know it's more like a kind of like, what do I want to say? Like a typology type of thing where, again, you'll figure out your numbers or certain assessments you could take. And that will give you your number and kind of see it's like, oh, this is what I typically do, which is helpful information. It really is. If they go out, I think it's the Enneagram Institute. There is a free, free quiz or assessment. And then there's like a $12 one. Just it. The more you know about yourself, the better it is. And you can see kind of like when you're stressed, you may pull for this number over here and these behaviors. And then when you're in a healthier state, you do these things over here. And that can just be really eye opening for what that is. So just making you helping you recognize um, your personality traits. And and that could help people that may be going through trauma. In addition to the body work, yes. they would know, OK, these are these are the things I do when I'm upset or when I'm in my head or yep. when I'm having trouble with the situation or those memories are coming back up mm-hmm. in addition to maybe shoulder pain or some pain in the body. Yep. Yeah. And I would say also, if if the memories are really strong and you're having a hard time because, again, it's like that trauma is coming back up, then you may need to physically get up and move. Because yeah. if you're sitting there, right, then you can also get very, what I want to say, like your body can clench and get tightened again. And you may physically need to get up and shake and shake it off, physically move, do jumping jacks, jump rope, take a walk, something. So now you're really, you're taking the tension out of your body and going, okay, it's in my mind. Those things did happen and I'm not in it. And so you get back into that grounded moment. The other thing you can do is get, pay attention to all five senses. You know, what am I hearing? What are three colors that I see right now? What am I tasting in my mouth? What's something that I'm touching? And I just totally forgot the fifth sense, but the other sense is there. Yeah. (laughs) But that's another way to get you grounded back into the moment versus, again, stuck up in the mind and letting that kind of run wild. So that's why they have a lot of these outdoor activities for people that have um, survived trauma. Yeah. It sounds like to get them moving and to get them outside or dancing or whatever it may be. Yeah. To express themselves through their body and get that body loosened up. And also I've heard things about massage being good for, for body work and releasing that trauma in in the body. Absolutely. Massage. So for some people, again, it's, there's not just one method you may need to try multiple ways, right? There can be energy work. There could be massage for, again, if you're really tight in a certain area, it's not uncommon for people to be on the massage table and they can burst into tears and are like, I don't understand what's going on. It's like, well, if you've held on to that, now it's got space for it. Reiki is energy work and that can be done distantly, but that can also release some things. Um, There's chakra work. There's acupuncture that can help. We know that nature is huge for more for most people, it's just a really a way to kind of soothe your system. So yeah, there's so many different things that it's like, keep trying something and you may, some days it may work and other days it may not. So just, I like say, have a tool bag of all these different things that you can try and use if you're having a challenging moment. And just really the biggest thing with that is know that it's a moment in time versus a forever. Nothing in our world is permanent. It's like right now, depending on your belief system, I say death is permanent. But for some people, that's not even permanent. So yeah. you move through these things. They're not forever. And the situation in the world that, you know, the COVID-19 yes. that's going on, that's not permanent either. Nope. And we we have to just look at the silver linings. Like some people are more successful. and They've been able to reach out to family more during this time. And yep. yeah, so this isn't permanent either. Nope. Yeah. So tell me, I'm really curious about your coaching of women. Can you tell me a little bit more about your your business that you have there? Yeah, so I specifically work mostly with women who identify as being more introverted. And then if they know that they're highly sensitive, gaining more acceptance of that sensitivity and how they're really good leaders of both, whether it's introversion and our HSPs, most of the women that I work with, they really love that the career or the profession that they're in or the business that they run. But what often happens is they kind of forget to take care of themselves. And so overwhelm sets in, being stressed out sets in. And then they feel disconnected in relationships. So I really help them find more of that harmony to get back in and not letting self-doubt run the show or like a really loud inner critic. We turn that into the inner coach so that they can keep doing what they love, which is making an impact in the world or with their mentors that they're you know, working with or mentees that they're working with or employees that they're working with. 
but also they don't lose their own personal life because it's like you need both. It's not an either or. And so some of that is perfectionism can get in their way and it's like, oh, they're working all these hours and we set some boundaries with that and do some energy management instead of like the time management like most people will do. For them, I'm like, we need to go back and look at like your energy and what's working for you and what's not. Because we can like, oh, that really worked for me five years ago. And then it becomes part of the habit, but yet it doesn't serve you anymore. It's like, well, then we're going to let go of that. (laughs) Because they may have changed. Their life has changed since then. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. And so for me, I'm a morning person. So are you Mm -hmm. talking about energy as far as like you have more energy in the morning? So you should be doing these these things in the morning? So for those, if if folks are, yeah, if it's your morning person or you find yourself on a tendency, like you get stressed out really easy because you're trying to rush into the day, I say build in a morning routine so that you, in a way, that's you taking care of yourself, whether you're doing a meditation in the morning, you're doing some gentle stretching or yoga in the morning, you're doing some journaling in the morning because maybe you need to purge something or write down some dreams that happened last night. Make that your time to connect with you. Read something inspirational or something you enjoy or watch, something like that. That gets your day started in a way that literally is like, okay, I'm grounded and I'm looking for the opportunities for the day versus, oh, it's another day. Oh, my gosh. And even with COVID going on, I'm like, try and keep some sort of routine that you have created so you can be like, yeah, I've got control over me because that's the reality. You, the only thing you've got control over is yourself and nobody else. Set yourself yeah. up to succeed. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good advice. So thank you so much for, for talking to me today. I and work- I just I want to say thank you for having me on, Jessica. And for your listeners, yeah, it's like there's so many beautiful resources that if they're thinking they're alone and that they're the only one struggling with maybe something that from a past trauma or going through a difficult time, it's like they're really not. There are tons and tons of resources. Ask for help. Please, please ask for help. Um, Reach out to a friend if you need to. And yeah, just know that they're not alone and we're whatever they're going through. Great. And then where could we find you on social media? Yeah, they can go out to Facebook. I believe that is under Nicole Burgess Coaching. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have all those things memorized. My No my problem. Handles. Yeah, but they can go out to NicoleBurgessCoaching.com, my website, and they can find out my own podcast that's out there for the Soul Filled Sisterhood. There's links, I think, out to the social media as well on there, too, so they can get in contact with me that way. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, and I'll be posting those in the show notes. And thanks for coming on today. Well, thank you for having me. You've been listening to Catalyst for Change, and my name is Jessica Huckabee, your host. Thanks for tuning in this week, and we look forward to another episode next Wednesday. So feel free to like us on social media, write a review, and share it with your friends. And I'll talk to you next week.